This is Steve, and this is Steve's CR6 SE from Kickstarter. We're gonna check this printer out today. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So like I said, today we're gonna be checking out Steve's CR6 SE. How's it going, Steve? Doing very good, how about you? I, I'm doing great. You, you let me play with this printer today, and we're actually gonna walk through the unboxing and the assembly and some special tips for the CR6 SE. But first, how long have you been 3D printing? I've been 3D printing for probably about uh, six years or so. Um, I started out with the uh, good old uh, printer bot uh, Metal Plus, <laughs> um, and that printer worked for me for a couple years. But by the time um, I needed to fix some parts on it, the company went out of business. So I oh. ended up getting into the Ender 3, and this is now my next uh, FDM printer. So. Nice, so a printer bot to an Ender 3 um, if we look back, that's a huge price difference. I mean, the printer bot was well, like 1200 bucks. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Ender 3 was probably like 230 bucks when you bought it. That's correct. And how is the print quality? The, pr <laughs> <laughs> the print uh, quality was a huge difference. Um, I actually have a couple parts at work that um, were printed on that original <laughs> printer. And the same parts I printed on the Ender were way better. Nice. And that's amazing how far printers have come from that original printer bot. So, so Steve is actually the reason why I got into 3D printing. He got his Ender 3, and then I was like, I need to check this out. So, uh, I don't know, three, four months later, um, we were talking a lot about it, and uh, we can blame him for all of the 3D printers and all the channel and everything, because it's really your fault. It is my fault. <laughs> that I got into 3D printing. So tell me about the Kickstarter. So you, you backed the Kickstarter. I thought about this printer um, when it first was introduced and I thought, hey, this is gonna be an excellent upgrade for me. Mm -hmm. And so the day that went live, I was number 404 on the nice. program. So my printer shipped on August 20th and I just received mine a couple days ago, which was uh, September 3rd. September 3rd. So, so today is September 5th. So that means he's held the box for two days before we could film this. So, so a couple things we can get out of the way right away. Number one, no smoke. We'll knock on wood. As you can see, there is a test print here on the printer. We did a little 10 by 10 by 50 test print because it was quick and we wanted to show that it printed. He's actually gonna take this home and do a lot more printing with it. But I really think building this thing went very smoothly. Uh, everything went together like it should. Everything in the instructions were really good. Even the touchscreen seems to be working pretty good from the factory. And I'm really excited to see a lot of the prints that you get. So hopefully you send them to me and I'll shoot them out on the social medias sure. for everybody to see. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the box, we're gonna go through what comes in it, and we're gonna assemble it. And we're gonna give you some special tips while you're assembling your CR6 SE, just to make sure everything is safe. So uh, I think we should jump into the unboxing. What do you think? It was a good idea. All right, let's unbox it. All right, so we got the CR6 SE on the bench. It's time to get this bad boy opened up. Steve's got his knife, and we're gonna cut this thing open and uh, check it out. So we got the top and the packing. We're gonna pull that out. So right on top, we got instructions, uh, starting G-code, it looks like. Um, your instructions looks like. Everything else is uh, packed in here pretty well. We will take out that, is that a, oh wow, that is filament. That's a full box a kilogram of filament. Nice, thank you Creality for sending a real size roll of filament, a spool of filament. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this all unboxed and we're gonna lay it out on the, on the uh, bench here and let's get this thing built. All right, so we got it all unboxed. We have the base, which has your uh, bed and it looks like it's kind of wrapped around some cables. Um, we have our gantry, which is awesome. It's all put together for us. So it has your dual Z. It has some extra parts, which it looks like a whole bunch of nozzles and another sensor. We got to check into this. I think it's a replacement for this one from what uh, Steve was saying. An extra boat and tube. Um, we have all of our parts that we're going to put it together with, which is compared to an Ender 3 is nothing. That's going to be super easy to do. We have our spool holder. We have the screen. We have the handle. And uh, of course, the full box, the full spool of white PLA filament. That is awesome because a lot of times you get those little baby spools and it's not enough to print much except for maybe the first test print. So we're gonna get this thing assembled, let's do it. So before we start assembling, we're gonna do a couple safety checks. The first one being on the cables that are behind our power plug here. And essentially all we're gonna do is grab our Allen wrench. You can use the one that came with the kit. I just like this one. 
and we're gonna take out these two screws. And this is just for peace of mind. There's a few people that found that, you know, they weren't all the way plugged in. And I believe we're just gonna slide it out real carefully here. And on the back here, it's hard to see in this camera angle. On the back, there's all these connectors. Just make sure all of them are pushed in tight and uh, you know that none of them are loose. It is actually a very short lead, so you can't really pull it out much further than this, but it's, you can get your fingers in here and just make sure they're all tight. We got them uh, all pushed in. They were all really good from the factory, but we double checked and we screwed our screws back in. Now we're gonna turn this thing and check the switch. Next thing we need to check is to make sure our power selector is correct. In this case, it did come on the 230 side. It needs to be over here on the 115 side for the US. So we're just gonna use our Allen wrench and push it over. Now it's on the 115 side and we're good to proceed. Steve was watching uh, Joel Telling's video, the 3D printing nerd, and he actually opened this up and checked the connections and made sure from the factory that everything was tight in here. So what we're gonna do now is pop this cover off and let's just make sure everything on the board is tight just so we're safe from the beginning. I believe it's these three screws and there might be one from the top we need to take out too. We're gonna start by taking these three screws out. I'll let you do the honors, how about that? And again, we're just gonna check and make sure everything on the board is tight and uh, you know connected like it should be. Um, you don't have to do this. It's always good practice, especially from you know this printer coming with some of the connections loose as we saw in some other videos. So it looks like there is one on the top side that we need to loosen too. So we flip the uh, printer back upright and this is the front of the printer. This screw here is what we wanna take out, I believe, to get that bottom case out. So when we do that, we just heard everything fall from the bottom. So this might be a good idea to do that one first and then flip your printer over and do the bottom three. In this case, we didn't know which one it was uh, gonna be, so we did it opposite. Now we're gonna carefully flip the printer back over and see what we got. So we got it flipped back over and this is actually that cover we were working on. I moved it closer to the camera so we could see. So take that cover off there and we gotta be very careful because there's a fan connected. Actually, what's really nice is they left us enough room to pull that off without disconnecting your fan. That is awesome. Usually it's really short and you gotta be careful. Now we got that cover off. Uh, this is actually our fan cable here, um, but I zoomed in so we could actually look in here. So this is the board and these are all the connections we wanna go through and just make sure everything's tight and secure. It looks like there is hot glue on. That's a, a classic Creality move. Um, our cables here are all pressed in. Um, in the back along here, you can't really see them because it's kind of hidden, but all those cables look like they're pressed in as well. I'm just pulling on the power here and making sure that's all tight and that's all tight. Kind of hard to read, but up in here you can see this is actually a uh, version 4.5.2 boards, 4.5.2. Uh, I'm not sure what they're all coming with, but I'm imagining it's probably this board. Um, but that's the board we got is the 452. So we're gonna put this back together, get these three screws back in and, and then the screw from the top and start the assembly. So the really cool thing about the CR6SE is that we're gonna take the gantry and actually set it right in these grooves. And as long as those grooves are cut correctly, then the gantry should sit actually almost perfectly straight up and be in place. So let's go ahead and set it right there. And uh, I'll hold it just like that and it should just sit right in those grooves on both sides. Then what we wanna do is take our two screws and push them up through the bottom. And to do that, I like to slide my printer over to the side, just like this, and screw in the bolts from the bottom on both sides. So once we got two bolts in this side and the two bolts in this side, everything should be tightened up nicely. And when it's all tightened up nicely, it should be really nice and sturdy. There should be no wobbling back and forth, nothing should rock. And now it's about as sturdy as it gets. Then we go on to the screen in the bottom right side. It takes two bolts and that's pretty easy to do. Just put those both in. Then we go on to the spool holder and we just twist the spool holder into the top just like this. And then it's super easy. All you have to do is clip it right into the extrusion and it kind of clips in just like that. And I really like this thing. It's cool because you can just fold it back when you're not using it. Now we go on to the sweet handle, uh, put the T-nuts in, position it right on the top of the machine, like right in the center of that Creality logo, and then you'll be able to tighten it right down and you're good to go there. Now we use the belt tensioner on this side to tighten the belt. Forward tightens it, backwards loosens it, 
and just make sure it's good and tight. On the y-axis, we want to do the same thing. Use the tensioner to make the belt tight. Then make sure your bed slides really nicely. It doesn't wobble. If it does, you want to adjust the eccentric nuts underneath. Now what we need to do is connect all of our cabling. The first one we're going to do that comes right up here and it plugs into our breakout box there. So the second cable uh, that's left here comes up from behind, goes underneath here. You want to make sure it's underneath the top here and then right into the top where the hot end is. These two clips pull out, the plug goes in, and then it actually comes down and pinches your clips in. And that's that, so now we're clipped in here. Now that we got that on, we're gonna do some cable management back here. So there's a clip uh, that is right behind here where Steve is pushing that in, and uh, the cable will slide into there. And then um, along your Bowden tube, there are these little coupler clips here. It's kind of like a, a twist tie, and you push it up and then you twist there we go, twist them back in. I like these because it's floating, it'll actually allow it to move. Now that you got them on, he's gonna space them apart a little bit, uh, so hopefully it keeps everything nice and centered and aligned. But the cool thing is it's gonna allow it to float in here, so they're gonna move when you start printing, those are gonna move anyway. Next, we're gonna do our Z-axis motors. So we uh, take off the adhesive here, and Steve's gonna do his side, and I'm gonna do my side. And basically, you just put them straight into the motors and make sure they're tight. Now we do the ZN stop, uh, which is right here. So we peel uh, the adhesive away and we plug that in. ZN stop is plugged in now and we go to the screen. So we tip the printer up and this is the back of the screen. So this is the screen here. This is where the plug goes. The plug is right here. So all we do is take that plug and we push it right into the back. There's only one spot it can go in and it's done just like that. Now what we wanna do is take the plastic off of the bed, and this is a Creality glass bed. So uh, Steve is gonna loosen the clips, and these are pretty awesome clips, I really like that. Uh, and he's just going to uh, kinda of pull that glass out of those back clips and peel the plastic off. And this is the uh, ah moment. <laughs> Bone chicka bow wow. <laughs> So he's peeling the plastic off and we should have a brand new glass Creality surface. Now that the plastic's off, we do need to clean this. We're gonna use IPA and a microfiber. And so we're gonna spray it on there and uh, just wipe it off real good because there's always a film that comes from the factory when they do these. Actually, if you use paper towel, most of the time it's actually a yellow film as well. So what I'm doing now is we raise the X gantry all the way up here and I'm gonna measure both sides. When we do the X gantry rework, I try to get this within one millimeter of each other and I'm just curious what it is from the factory. So I'm gonna measure from uh, right here up to the top. It looks like about 83 millimeters. And if I come over here and I do the same thing, it looks like it looks like it's about 83, 84 millimeters. So I would say that's definitely within the one millimeter variation we see and we want with our X gantry rework. And that's awesome to see from the factory. There's nothing we really need to do here because it's definitely dialed in. The dual Z should help keep it there, but I definitely wanted to measure that in our process. If this happens to be way off here, you can adjust it by turning your Z motor here to fix the arm to match. And you wanna do that so you're within one millimeter on each side. Now we're gonna plug in the printer on the side over here, and we're gonna turn this thing on for the first time. As you can see, the Creality splash screen, it'll go through the loading process, and there's a little bar that goes across, which is awesome. The menu came up, I can hear fans running, and so far, so good, no smoke. The next step in the instruction manual is to actually do the auto leveling. So in the main screen here, in the bottom right corner is a level button. Steve's gonna press the level button and then there's an auto leveling button after that. So he's gonna press it. And after the button's pressed, it needs to heat up. And it says it needs to heat up to 120 C and then it can start leveling. So we're gonna let this heat up and we'll be right back as soon as it's done. Just about to temp here, it's about 120 degrees. So it homed uh, forward and it homed to the side. So the Y and the X homed, the Z is actually coming down as we talk. So we're just about to the Z homing here. It just hit the sensor and it did the bounce and now it should start the auto leveling sequence. So it goes to the uh, front and it should do four points across. Oh, it goes backwards. So it went to the front and it's going backwards to do the leveling. I'm, I'm used to seeing them go this way 
In this case, it's actually going this way. So we're gonna let it level, and as soon as it's done leveling, we'll check the mesh and see how it looks. As it's leveling, it's actually going very quick. As you can see, I zoomed in a little bit to show, uh, show it up a little closer, but it's really cool how it works, and we're gonna see how the mesh looks in uh, just a second here. It was really fast. It actually leveled very quickly. So these are all the different points that it hits. Like I said, there's 16 of them. Um, it tells you up here it needs to wait till it's 120 degrees C, which it still is currently. And then when it's done, this is how your screen looks. Something to point out before we heat up is the tray right here. So if you actually pull that tray open, it's got a lot of cool stuff in there. So we got the tray open after we pulled it out and it's got a lot of cool stuff. For one, it's got a pretty cool little spatula here for getting prints off the bed. And then if you take the foam out, everything else is packed in your foam. And it's really cool. You have uh, your micro S or your, your SD card, your SD card reader, and a nozzle wrench, a miniature nips here, a snipper. Um, it's not like the blue one we usually see from Crowdy. It's a miniature one. This is your SD card here. Um, you actually get a real wrench, which I think is, is pretty awesome. You actually get a real wrench this time instead of a little guy. And then... Your Allen wrenches are actually uh, a real set of Allen wrenches in a little holder there. And that's pretty cool. And then of course your nozzle cleaning needle, that's what that is, is to clean your nozzle out. So we'll push the tray back in and we go to preheat. So this is our auto level screen. We're gonna hit the back button and we're gonna preheat the nozzle now. So um, if you go back to the main menu here and then go to prepare and preheat PLA, um, there you go. What it's gonna do is set our bed at 60 and our nozzle at 200 and it's gonna preheat and then we're gonna load some filament in. So we're gonna grab some filament. In this case, I'm gonna use Arion Silk Blue because it's really nice color and it's gonna show up really nice for our first test print. I'm gonna to toss that on the spool holder and in a second here, I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually see the load process on the uh, CR6 SE here. All right, so I zoomed in and this is our extruder assembly up here. And this kind of works different than the normal uh, printers that we've been seeing. So the first thing we need to do is actually release the hatch. That's what we'll call it, the hatch. So you pull the lever out and that releases inside of here so we can actually push our filament in. So uh, then what we did was cut this at a really good angle, just like we would any other printer. We're gonna throw it through the filament runout sensor um, carefully. And then when it gets to that side, Steve will fish it into the hole there and uh, it can be a pain, there we go, perfect. So then you push it through your extruder, down through your Bowden tube like normal, and we'll push it all the way down into the hot end until it starts coming out uh, of the nozzle down there, just, just enough so we know it's pushed in. As Soon as you see your filament coming out of the nozzle, then what you'll do is flip the little lever there and that locks everything into place and, and that'll engage the extruder. So we should be good to go now. So as you can see here, we were pushing the blue through and there's a bunch of black filament already in here. So that means they did test this printer from the factory at some point. Uh, we'll take that out and you can actually see there, that's the blue and then you can see the black attached to it. So it was tested from the factory, which is a good thing. Now we wanna put our memory card in and the slot is actually behind this sticker here. So we're gonna peel that sticker off and that will reveal the SD card slot and it's a full size SD card, which is awesome. And uh, I believe it goes face up just like that. Perfect. So if you saw that, the SD card is actually upside down and that's how it goes in. It clicked in and locked in place. Now let's do a test print. So we're back at the main menu here on the control panel. And what we're gonna do is actually a test print. And the SD card we're using is using the pre-production files that came from Kickstarter. It is not using the one that came with the printer, but we're gonna see what's on those files. So we're gonna hit print and we're gonna choose that 10 by 10 by 50 print right there because I think that's gonna be a good fast one for us to see on the video here. And when we're ready, I believe we just hit the print button and we're off. So we did the auto home and it looks like the file's gonna start. In this case, it is not set to a G29 to do that auto leveling again. So that's interesting. So it started printing, it has a skirt and it's just a little 10 by 10 by 50 um, tower. And we're gonna let this go and let it print here. It is sticking on the first try. The print looks really good so far. The G-code on the test print did not have that bed leveling again. So we've only done it once and we did not do it before this one. I personally would just do a G29 before every print, probably because it's very quick. 
but in this case we did not do that we're gonna let it run and we'll check out the print when it's ready so we're at about 62 percent and it's getting uh, taller and taller the print still looks very good and we're almost done all right the print got done it actually slid the bed back and moved the hot end over the interesting thing about this print is it was all hollow and it actually put a top on it. So if we look at the top of the print, it actually filled in uh, and bridged very nicely there at the top. The whole print looks really good. The layers look good. This is just a really quick way for us to test everything. It looks really good here. Uh, Steve's gonna take this home and do some more testing. So you just saw the unboxing, the assembly, and the setup, and of course, the test print that we did on the CR6 SE. And again, this was Steve's CR6 SE. I didn't get one, I'm very jealous, but he has graciously allowed us to film it today, so he brought it over to the, to the shop here. What was one cool thing about the assembly on this printer that you didn't see on your original Ender 3? Well, I think the, the coolest thing was the ease of building. Um, there was only a few major parts that needed to be assembled with just some very basic tools and very minimal screws to put it together. Right. And so I think that was a huge plus on this in this case. Yeah, I mean, it was really four bolts to put the gantry on, which is uh, awesome. Then it was two bolts for your screen and I think two bolts for the handle. So it was like eight bolts and that's pretty awesome. Uh, one of the things that I really liked, and I said this about the Ender 3 V2, is I really like the belt tensioners. It makes it super easy to tension your belts. Um, just don't go overboard. It's very easy to go overboard on these belt tensioners. The other thing I really liked is how fast the bed leveling was. It did 16 points in a super fast amount of time, which was really cool to see from the factory because a lot of times... It does nine and it's really slow. Another thing I wanted to point out in the beginning of the video, we were looking at an open box and I was like, what is this? Well, it turned out to be a full spool of Creality White PLA filament. I think this is awesome. I think this should be in every printer because the test spools you usually get barely get any use because it's not enough filament really to do anything. Uh, if you get a whole spool here, just like this from Creality, I really think that's a great way to test your printer. And if you're new, you might not even know you need to order filament right away. So thank you, Creality, for doing this because, I, I mean, this is awesome. Uh, I know you're going to put this to good use. Definitely. The only thing that I would change on this build is actually how the spool holder sits. It, it tells you to put the holder facing the back. That way it can fold back nicely. The problem I have is that it sits so far back here you can see it's kind of pulling the filament forward. Um, I think Steve is actually going to reverse it so that the so that the spool holder sits here because that's more of a direct path. I'm not a fan of that. I, I think it's going to pull off. Depending on the spool, it could definitely pull filament right off the side, and I'm not I'm not a huge fan of that. But but that's easily fixed because all you have to do is take this off and push it in the front. The other thing I thought was cool was the locking clip here that locks your cabling into the hot end. Uh, I think that's really cool because then you know it's not gonna come loose. There's two claws that come and lock it in. I definitely appreciate Steve letting us film this today because again, I didn't get one and I'm pretty jealous. Um, number 404 on Kickstarter. Let us know in the comments below. Do you have one and what number Kickstarter were you? I know he was one of the last ones they shipped and they shipped a whole lot before his. So I know uh, he, he was waiting for a long time. But again, thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you for letting us build it on camera and holding it in the box for two days because I know that's hard to do when you get a new printer. <laughs> well, I hope you learned something today. And as always, keep printing. Hey, everybody. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button right here and the little bell if you want to get notified next time we go live on Monday nights for Hot Makes or when my next video comes out. Have you seen this one?